water having been heated by the boiler comes upstairs and it comes up via this pipe through the pump where it's pumped um, to radiators going around the house. Um, in this particular instance there's eight, eight radiators on this system. Um, there is a ninth which we'll talk about in a moment but it's not the, ra the, the, the radiator as you would normally expect. Um, the pump itself can be isolated from the system and changed because they don't last forever um, and to isolate it these two valves are simply turned off, the pump is removed, a new pump's put in and the valves turn back on again. Uh, once again throughout our videos on domestic hot and cold water and central heating you'll see that the valves have been labelled um, and that's to help the, the owner of the home recognise what is what um, and to in some complex system it even helps the plumber when they come along to identify things very very quickly and save you quite a lot of money um, th uh, by them not having to go through the entire system to see what everything does. So the water has gone through the pump, it's now being pumped, it's under pressure and it's going to go around the system. It then goes along the, this small section of pipe um, to a three-way, two-port diverting valve, okay? An electrically operated valve which tells your water where to go, okay? We'll deal with the, the normal radiators first a little. So it comes along to, the, to this port and it says to this um, valve here, where do you want me to go? And the valve says, okay, everything else is working really, really rather nicely, so I'm gonna send you down this pipe to, to the radiators. And off it goes. It goes down through the radiators under pressure. Um, a greater amount of pressure in this particular system because the radiators are fed by what are called microbore pipes. They're eight millimeter copper pipes, um, quite a bit narrower than the 15 millimeters used on a normal circuit. So the, the water is fed to them under pressure um, and they get hot. It, that, that is as simple as that. Um, and then when you turn the boiler off, they go cold again. Um, that's how a central heating system <laughs> works. Okay. Um, however, what happens um, in, in this particular instance is that if we go up a little bit to this uh, hot water cylinder here, inside this hot water cylinder, there is a copper coil. And that is part of the central heating system. It's in effect, it's just the ninth radiator it's another radiator and instead of using that radiator to heat the home we're using it to heat the domestic hot water so let's go back down again to this diversion valve when the water gets to here and it says to the valve where would you like me to go this valve has the option of sending it down to the radiators sending it up through this pipe to the ninth radiator in here or the copper coil in this indirect cylinder to heat the coil, the water in the coil and or the water in the radiators. So it can be, it can send it one way or the other or both. Um, and that's why it's electrically operated because it needs to open and close as required. If it's sent to this uh, coil within the cylinder, the water, the hot water, goes into the coil, it goes round and round the coil constantly, and it heats the water within the hot water cylinder. That water can then be drawn off for showers or baths or whatever without the use of the immersion heater. So that's an indirect uh, cylinder, that's how an indirect cylinder works, and how it's heated via the central heating system. Um, the, once, the, once the water has been sent round the system, it goes via, that's the flow, it flows round and round the system, it's then returned to the boiler to be reheated. And when it's reheated, the whole thing happens again. So it's one giant circuit which is completely separate from the domestic hot water. That's the water you bathe in and the water you drink. Um, it's important to know that because we get a great many questions um, to say how do you separate them, they're, ne they're never, they're never um, mixed in the first place, they're two completely separate systems. So from the boiler it comes to the pump, from the pump it's pumped round and round the system. If this diverter valve wasn't here um, it would just simply keep going round and round. Sometimes however hot water is required and the valve will send water into what we call the ninth radiator, the copper coil within the cylinder, 
that is heated, that goes then back around the system as it does with the other radiators, but at the same time it heats the water within the tank. So it's a credibly efficient system, which doesn't, uh, uh, most of the time, require, it doesn't require you to turn the immersion on. Um, there's a thermostat on the side of the tank and that measures the temperature of the water within there. When it's re reached the required temperature for the central heating system, it tells the valve, thank you very much that we've had enough water now, we're, we're hot enough now, and it closes this valve down, or the port of this valve, which sends the water up to the indirect system, and all of the water is diverted back down through the radiators. Um, so when it reaches its required temperature, um, this just shuts it down. Conversely, sometimes if, if there's a fault or something goes wrong, the water might get too hot. If that's the case, the water, the, uh, the overpressure, uh, which is introduced by the, the boiling of the water or the water getting too hot, is then forced back up uh, a cold feed pipe into what's called an expansion tank in the loft. Now, ordinarily, we'll go and have a look at that in a minute, but the expansion tank is, has some water in it because as the water goes around the system, some of it evaporates if there's a little leak or whatever, some gets out. So to absolutely ensure that that water, the system remains full all the time, the little tank in the loft, which is pretty, pretty much always next to your cold water tank, the expansion tank up there, just slowly feeds down into the system to make sure there's a constant amount of water in the system. If some of that water gets too hot, it blows back up that into the expansion tank um, and vents out at the top there. Um, so that's how we, we keep the system safe. Going back to the um, diverter valve, as the water is diverted into the top of the brass coil or the copper coil that we told you about, you'll see that the pipe extends beyond that inlet. Now that is just to release any air because as water's being pumped around it gurgles and sometimes air is introduced into the system um, and, and, and that allows for system failures. So there's a little vent at the top and if there is any air in the system the air will find the highest point and is released through this air vent at the top of the, the, the hot water pipe, the inlet for the ninth radiator or the coil. Um, and that's pretty much how the, uh, the system works in um, you know, I would say the majority of, of airing covers, the majority of systems are, are like this, others uh, vary, but, but if you have this number of controls and they, they look pretty much the same, um, then it's, it's fairly safe to assume that your system is working in an indirect way and heating the domestic hot water through the hot water cylinder. So we'll, we'll nip up into the loft just to show you the expansion tank um, and explain once again how that works. Um, and and just, to, just to reiterate, it's a really good idea when you find out how your system works in your home, just to put these labels on to make sure that everybody who bumps into this system um, knows which valves do what. So here we have the central heating expansion tank. So called because um, as water is heated and cools down again within the central heating system, um, as it gets hot it expands um, and as it gets cooler it sort of contracts and drops down again. So we make sure that there's some water in this expansion tank and an outlet on the side of the expansion tank which can feed or top up the central heating system. Remember the water that's coming into the central heating is coming in via the boiler, um, getting hot and cold all of the time. So to keep that system topped up this expansion tank um, allows water just to, to top the system up and keep it at a constant, make sure that it's constantly full. Um, the water that, that uh, starts in the expansion tank is fed as the cold water um, system is fed, the domestic cold water, by um, a float valve or a ball cock. The water comes in at the top of the tank, uh, is controlled by the, the float within the tank, so that sits at a constant, um, constant height. If water is required in the system, it simply goes out through the, um, the outlet pipe from the expansion tank. And in the event of anything going wrong within the central heating system and, and water boiling up or the pressure getting too great, um, that is pushed back up through this pipe, uh, which we saw downstairs, 
and that fed straight back into the expansion tank. So once again, there's a kind of a self-enclosed system which allows for topping up your heating, um, taking care of any expansion, taking care of any um, sort of uh, over, over boiling, overheating of the system so that it's pretty much self-contained. Um, you'll see that there's a tin of central heating, uh, a, a tub of central heating protector next to it. Uh, uh, the plumber will always leave that there just to show the next plumber that, that you know, that there has been protection, some protection made on the tank and it's a good idea to, to call them in occasionally to get that, get that protection done. So that's the, the, the final part really of the, the central heating system. Make sure all your pipes are lagged wherever possible. I've just taken the lagging off this to show you this pipe. Um, uh, and make sure the system is protected all of the time uh, and it shouldn't let you down. As well as all the other bits and pieces in the expansion tank, the central heating expansion tank, of course, we've got the, the standard overflow. If the ball cop fails to shut the water off, the water can just escape, uh, escape through the overflow um, and out through the side of the house where, once again, if it is dripping, it's a visible sign that things are going wrong. And finally, one really important thing to remember, we've said it once or twice during the making of this video, you'll see that this expansion tank, as within most lofts, is pretty close to the cold water tank. The central heating and the domestic cold and hot water are two entirely different systems. At no point should they be mixed. This expansion tank, because of the occasional venting from the, the vent pipe we talked about, because of the chemicals that go in it to protect the system, it's, it isn't drinkable, it's not for use for washing carpets, clothes or anything else, it will just melt everything it comes in contact with. Um, so please keep that, make sure that you remember that this is an entirely separate system, it's got its separate lid, it's got its separate um, insulation and shouldn't be mixed with the domestic water at any time at all. Um, and, and that's pretty much it.